distinguished Toastmaster Sunil Kotharanti, Region Advisor Sandra Cooper, Region Advisor DTM James, District 116 Director DTM Raghavan Maimon, District PQD DTM Tayanan, District CGD DTM Manzur Moibing, District Pass, in immediate past district director DTM Rajeshwar Sundaresan, other district, division, area directors, club officials, fellow Toastmasters, and Toastmasters all over the world. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. This is Toastmaster Alarmil Mangai, your MC for the evening today, welcoming you all to this wonderful session of entertainment as well as enlightening learning on leadership. Leadership lecture series organized by District 116 leadership team. Before we start, let me read out the district mission and inform you the program schedule and some ground rules. Here's the district mission. We build new clubs and support all clubs to achieve Excellence. Here's a program schedule. There will be a formal inauguration of the meeting by our district director, DTM Raghavan Menon. Then, introduction of our speaker by our IPDD, DTM Rajeshwar Sundarajan. Then, we'll have the leadership lecture by DTM Jana Banhal, followed by a question and answer session to be anchored by DTM Ramohan Pai. Finally, we'll have the vote of thanks by our CGD DTM on Zoom. So here are the ground rules. Except for the present year, all the other attendees will be put in muted condition to avoid disturbances. Please do not enable your cameras unless you are requested by the present year. I'm sure you'll all be having a lot of questions during the speech by our present here. Don't wait until the last minute to put in your questions in the chat box below you see the in the presentation table. Do send in your questions then and as and when they arise to DTM Ramohan Rai personal chat box. That will help him to Handle your questions effectively at the end. I repeat, don't wait until the last minute. Now also make your questions short, purposeful, straight to the point and relevant. Please make it short, straight to the point and relevant. Don't wait until the last minute. With these basic guidelines, let us get on with our Wonderful session. A leader is the one who knows the way, shows the way, goes the way. It's a John Maxwell. Right? What if there is no way? We have amongst us a leader who will create a way and show and lead us. No wonder he believes no pressure, no diamond. It is my pleasure to introduce the man who will handle all the pressure with a smile in his face and professionalism. Create a path of his own style. Pillar of District 116, our own district director, distinguished Toastmaster Raghavan Menon. Over to you, Didi. Thank you, Mangai, for the introduction. Past International President, Distinguished Toastmaster, and our guest speaker today, Toastmaster Jana Banal. Past International President, Distinguished Toastmaster, Balraj Arunasalam. Region Advisors, Distinguished Toastmasters, Ali Shabasali, Sunil Kutaratil, Sandra, and James. District 116, Program Quality Director, Distinguished Toastmaster Thayalan, 
District 116 Club Group Director, Distinguished Toastmaster Mansoor, immediate past District Director Rajeshwar, and all other past and present district division and area and club leaders and members, and all our friends and guests from all around the world. Good evening, and welcome to the second of the leadership lecture series. I declare this lecture open. Your district is organizing this series of leadership lectures to give you a head start. Today, we have a golden opportunity to listen to one of the best in the game, the past international president. She was not only the past international president, she was also second and third prize winner two times in the World Championship of Public Speaking a very beautiful combination of leadership and communication skills. Thank you, ma'am, for accepting our request to address our wonderful members. Dear friends, have you heard about something called as a shutdown maintenance? People who are in the production industry or the factories, I'm sure they will understand better. But for others, let me briefly tell you what it is. When missionaries start working around the clock, 365 days in a year, they tend to have a little bit of wearing out and some lubrication, etc., may have to be done. So what factories do is they do a partially, some missions they will shut down and they will take it for a maintenance work, by which at the end of the maintenance, when they replace the worn out parts or the do lubrication, etc., the machines will start functioning very efficiently. So when they restart the machines, they will be giving a better production and efficient way of handling. Similarly, these days of coronavirus problems we are all undergoing, all of us are in a state of partial maintenance shutdowns. Now, when I say partial, because we are all having online meetings. So we are not shut down completely. We are doing a maintenance right now. Now, what you do by maintenance, I mean is, we have to upskill our communication and leadership skills. We have to upskill our health. We have to upskill our knowledge. So that when we come back to our in-person meetings, which we are so used to and we are missing, we will be coming with a jump start. So leaders and friends, let's commit ourselves for a better productivity that we can give a jump start to all our speaking and leadership skills when the bad time ends, which is very soon. Back to the MC. Thank you, Didi, for those inspiring words. Leaders become great, not because of their past, but because of their ability to empower others. This is again said by John Maxwell. We have amongst us a total embodiment of this definition who believes we raise by raising others. He is the one who raised our district to the glory of being the number one district during his reign as the district director. Renowned chartered accountant, a rare combination of humor and hegemony. It's my honor to welcome our immediate past district director, very popular, passionate, persuasive, distinguished Toastmaster, DTM, Rajeshwar Sundaresan to introduce our speaker. Over to you. Thank you, Alamel, uh, DTM Alamel. MC for today. That was a nice introduction. Good evening and Ramadan Kareem to Toastmasters and guests from different parts of the world. It's my great honor and privilege to introduce our speaker this evening for District 116 Qatar's Leadership Lecture, Part 2, Distinguished Toastmaster Jenna Brennan. A Toastmasters for over 20 years she was only the fourth woman to hold the position 
as Toastmasters International President in over 90 years. Past International President Jenna is not only a role model as a leader, but she is also an incredibly accomplished speaker. DTM Jenna is the fifth woman to earn the title Accredited Speaker Designation. She's a five-time winner of the District International Speech Contest and was placed twice as third and second, in third and second positions in the World Championship of Public Speaking. DTM Jenna is a popular speaker at district conference in different parts of the world every year. She is also highly respected as a friend, mentor, and inspiration to countless people. Thanks to this opportunity, I watched YouTube videos of our speaker, and I am impressed and inspired. She advocates for no matter where one is in their life, it is important and valuable to work on our communication skills. Jenna Braniel's philosophy is, even though our world is currently experiencing such uncertain times, if you are in Toastmasters, you still have many reasons to celebrate. She's joining us this evening to share those thoughts with us. Hello Toastmasters and guests, please help me welcome for the leadership lecture of District 116 Qatar, past international president, distinguished Toastmaster, Jenna Brandhill, with the title of her talk, Celebrate. Jenna, over to you. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that beautiful introduction. And hello, District 116. Oh my goodness, what an honor it is for me to join you this evening and share this time with you. Uh, hello, past International President Balraj. What a treat to have you uh, join us for uh, this evening. That's a, that was a great surprise for me. And Sunny, and those of you who I've known uh, for a while, it's just such a pleasure to join you. And it's great uh, to be with all of the, the members of District 116. And let me say, what a joy it was for me at the International Convention in Denver, Colorado, to watch those of you who were there as you celebrated your accomplishment of being the number one district in the world. Congratulations to you again uh, for such a magnificent achievement. And it truly was a joy to watch all of you. Uh, I love celebrations. Unfortunately, it seems like sometimes things can happen that if we let it, they dampen our enthusiasm and perhaps even cause us to believe we have no reason at all to celebrate. And I kind of feel like that's where we might be in the world right now with this pandemic that we are all facing. You know, I, I know for me, it, it reached a point where I just stopped watching any news at all because it was all so negative. And I'm one of those people who believe that even if all those around you are talking nothing but despair, I still believe that there is good to be found. I still believe that there are reasons to celebrate, especially uh, if, if the walls are, are kind of closing in on us, which is how some of you may feel right now. Uh, we need to be reminded of, of good things. And, and I feel like uh, some of you are the same way. I looked at your website and one of the first things I noticed when I looked at your website was a box with the words, 
everything is not locked down. Love, hope, learning, creativity, goals, and my fellow Toastmasters, those words are so true. And do you know where we can find every one of those things? Right here, right here in Toastmasters. And I, I understand that sometimes we just need to be reminded of things. And my, my goal this evening is, is not strictly to, to focus on leadership with you, but I certainly will discuss leadership and we'll take any questions about leadership you have. Uh, but my hope for you is to remind you of all of the great things this organization offers you. Because some of you, uh, I understand, some of you may have been so affected by this pandemic that uh, it is causing some of you to actually think, uh, I'm going to have to give some things up. Some of you may be even thinking, I'm going to have to give up Toastmasters. And I'm here tonight to encourage you that of all things, Toastmasters is one of the things you should hold on to the tightest. Because the fact is, this organization brings us so many things to celebrate. You know, I don't know what brought you to Toastmasters. Uh, perhaps you were just invited by a friend and you thought you were going to lunch. Perhaps you were terrified to stand before a group and so you came on your own. Perhaps you had a boss who suggested you join Toastmasters. So I, I don't know what brought you to Toastmasters, but I do know where it can take you. I do know what it can give you. And I wanna focus on all of that in this, this next short time we have together. Uh, you know why I joined Toastmasters? I came to Toastmasters uh, not because I was invited by a friend, not because I was terrified to stand before a group and speak, and I didn't have a boss who suggested that I join. I came to Toastmasters because a year before my husband had joined and I decided he was having too much fun without me. That is why I joined Toastmasters. I had no lofty goals. I had no high expectations. I simply came to have a good time with my husband. But I joined a great club and they assigned me an amazing mentor and those people went to work on me. And I know there had to have been times when they were sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, what are we going to do with her? This is painful. And I know that there were times when I did such a poor job on a speech that my evaluator or my mentor could easily have said to me, oh, Jana, oh, that was so bad. We, we really think probably the best thing for you would be to just quit. But that's not what they said to me. What they said to me was, Jana, you can do better, and here's how. They saw potential in me that I didn't. I had never even looked for it, but they saw it. And with their help and their encouragement, I went on and in exactly nine months, I completed my first manual. And I remember, my mentor 
standing in front of the club one evening as she was about to present me with my Covenant Communicator badge. And she stood there and she said, Jana, I have felt your growth since you joined us. You have made me queasy. You have excited me. You have made me proud. And you've also made my stomach hurt. All in all, I feel like I've given birth. Little did I know, they were nowhere near finished with me. I still had so much to learn. And that's when they came to me and said, Jana, you are going to be in the International Speech Contest. And I said, no. And they said, yes, you are. And I didn't know I could argue with them. So I said, okay. And I know that there were times when I was going through my speech that they could have been sitting there thinking, okay, maybe not. But that isn't what they said to me. What they said to me was, Jana, you can do better than that. And here's how. And with their help and their encouragement, I went on to win the District International Speech Contest. But little did I know, they were still nowhere near finished with me. That's when they came to me and said, Jana, we want you to serve as a club officer. I, I was so honored. And I looked at them and I said, no. And you know what? They didn't accept that. And I still didn't know I could argue with them. So I accepted an officer position. And one led to another, led to another, until I was serving as club president. Now, seriously, what more could I have to learn after serving as club president, right? But you know, you know there was much more for me to learn. <clears throat> and so before I knew it, <clears throat> I was being elected division governor what it was when I served in that position. And I was working so hard to be the best division governor I could possibly be. And springtime rolled around and it was time for all the contests. And I was supporting all of my area governors by attending their, their contests. And well, have you ever walked into a room for an event and as soon as you walked in, thought to yourself, oh, this is going to be bad. You can feel it in the air. That's the way this was that evening. And it went from bad to worse. And we, we reached the point where it was time for the area governor to present the awards for the evening. Now, in addition to the speech contest awards, he was also awarding Outstanding Club President and Toastmaster of the Year. So we got to Toastmaster of the Year. And you know how sometimes people, when they are presenting an award, they will list several accomplishments of the recipient. And that's what he was doing and anticipation was building. Who was it going to be? And then that area governor picked up the trophy for Toastmaster of the Year. And with all of the enthusiasm he could muster, he said, and Toastmaster of the Year goes to me. True story. I was so thankful that I was sitting on the back row for two reasons. One was I had not yet mastered 
this. So if I was thinking it, you could see it. The second reason I was thankful to be sitting on the back row was it gave me a quick getaway. So as soon as we were adjourned that evening, I made a beeline to my car and I drove straight to my sounding board's house. Someone who I could vent. And I rang the doorbell, she answered the door, I pushed her aside, walked in, threw myself on her couch, and I said, bring me a drink, we gotta talk. Well, that's what I should have done. What I did instead was, when she answered the door, I said to her, grab your purse, we're going to the Dairy Queen. Now the Dairy Queen here is a local hamburger establishment, a public place. And my sounding board and I went to that public place. And we sat there and I have no doubt that the longer I spoke, the louder I spoke about all of the things that had gone wrong that evening. Now, fast forward a few weeks. It's time for club officer training. And I was responsible for club officer training. So I was standing at the door, greeting everyone as they arrived. Tracy, oh, I am so glad you're going to continue as a club officer. You did such a wonderful job. Sam, are you going to be a club officer this year? Wonderful. You will be amazing. And on and on. And then up walked a woman I didn't know. And so I extended my hand to introduce myself. And I said, hello, I'm Jana Barnhill. And she looked at me without a smile on her face. And she said, I know who you are. I was at the Dairy Queen a few weeks ago. As long ago as that happened, it still pains me to tell that story because I don't think I had ever felt so embarrassed. I don't think I had ever felt so ashamed. And I remember just standing there wishing the ground would just open up and swallow me. My saving grace through that incident, my saving grace was that it happened in Toastmasters. See, had that happened to me in the workplace, I would have been shown the door and my leadership development opportunities would have ended right there. But because it happened in Toastmasters, I went back to my wonderful club and I told them what I had done. And just like our Toastmasters do, when we fall on our face, they picked me up they brushed me off. They looked at me and they said, oh, Jana, oh, Jana, you can do so much better than that. And here's how. And that was the moment, my friends, that I knew Toastmasters would never be finished with me, nor I with it, because I will always have something to learn. There will always be something new. And so I stayed. 
and I continued to surround myself with people who saw potential in me where I did not. I continued to accept their challenges and I continued to grow. And as a result, I went on to celebrate some of the things you, you heard about earlier. I went on to celebrate a third and second place finish in the World Championship of Public Speaking. I went on to celebrate becoming an accredited speaker. And I went on to celebrate one of the greatest honors I have ever had in my life, serving as your international president. See, in Toastmasters, I was born a communicator. In Toastmasters, I was made a leader. And ladies and gentlemen, the only thing I signed up for was to have a good time with my husband. So just imagine, just imagine where Toastmasters can take you. Now, Toastmasters is not only the place where communicators are born. It is not only the place where leaders are made. The Toastmasters is also the place where family is found. Well, actually, I should probably rephrase that because sometimes family can be challenging, right? I have two older brothers. They are 10 and 12 years older. And when people who know me, when they hear that, oftentimes the response is, oh, that explains a lot. And those of you listening, if there are any little sisters out there or any big brothers out there, you know what I'm talking about. Big brothers love to pick on their little sisters and we never outgrow that. So I remember when I graduated from high school and I moved away to go to college. I had lived in a very tropical area, very close to the beach. But when I moved away to college, I moved to the plains where we had definite seasons, even winter and some snow. And I remember that first year that I was there and fall was about to move into winter and one of my older brothers called me. He said he was just checking up on me and he said, now you need to make sure you're ready for that winter you are about to have. And I said, okay. And he proceeded to list several things that I needed to do to prepare for the weather. And then he said, and don't forget your tires. I said, what about my tires? He said, well, you, you need to have the air changed. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, you need to take your car to a tire store and have them switch out the summer air for the winter air. Don't get ahead of me. But you're right. That Saturday, I drove my car to a tire store. I walked in and I told the man what I needed and he could have won an acting award. He looked at me without cracking a smile and said, well now, aren't you on top of things? And I looked at him and I said, my brother told me I needed to do this. And then he smiled and said, well, that explains a lot. So sometimes family can be challenging. Sometimes we love our family more than anyone, but sometimes we don't even speak to family. And we can't choose family. But community, community is different. Community is a group of people who choose to be together. 
Community is a group of people who, when others are standing there looking at you and saying, you don't belong here, your community is standing there with open arms saying, welcome. Your community is there to share with you and celebrate with you your good times and your triumphs. Do me a favor. I know we can't all see each other, but if any of you have ever been surrounded by your Toastmasters community to celebrate something in your life, it could be a graduation, a marriage, a new job, a baby, a grandbaby, running a marathon, anything. If your Toastmasters community has celebrated with you, raise your hand. Now, I'm going to guess that most, if not all of you, raised your hand or at least smiled or nodded because you knew you could have, because you have celebrated with your community. That's what we do. Uh, let me share one of mine with you. One year, part of my Toastmasters community, under the leadership of my husband, threw me a surprise birthday party, and they pulled it off. Now, this was not a typical surprise birthday party. It was not held at someone's home. It was not held at a restaurant. This surprise birthday party was given to me at one of my favorite places in the world. Disneyland. How cool is that? But that's what communities do. At the same time, communities are also equally there for you to lift you up through your trials. Do you remember when I, when I said I had won that district international speech contest? Well, what I didn't say to you then was I went on to compete in the semifinals. Now, at that time, we still had region conferences. So I went on to region, and I have to admit, I had never spoken to a group of people that large before. And when I took the stage, I was overwhelmed. And the very first time I even noticed the lights and the timer who were sitting right in front of me the very first time I noticed them. The light was the color of my jacket and the woman who was timing was sitting there like this. Ladies and gentlemen, I spoke a minute and a half over time. Now, I will never forget, as soon as that banquet was adjourned, I did what any respectable contestant who speaks a minute and a half over time would do. I ran to my room, threw myself on my bed, I grabbed my stuffed bunny and I cried. And in a little bit, there was a knock at my door. Well, I ignored it, but they didn't go away. And in a little bit, there was another knock at my door. So I got up begrudgingly and I walked to the door and opened it, and to my absolute disbelief, there stood the visiting international officer and 
the winner of that speech contest. Both of those men had hundreds of people wanting to talk to them. But they left that ballroom and they came to talk to me. And they said to me, Gianna, you have a lot of potential. You can do better. And here's how. Of course, the winner of that speech contest had the audacity to bring his trophy with him. But that was okay. And it made me feel so much better. But that's what communities do. So again, I will ask you if any of you have ever been surrounded by your Toastmasters community to support you through a trial, a lost job, an illness, ailing parents, anything, raise your hand. I'm guessing again, most of you did. We've all been supported by our Toastmasters community because that's what community does. You know, I'll share one more with you. Uh, I remember when my husband's parents passed away. My husband lost both of his parents within 24 hours of each other. Now, my husband was also a, a past international president. And when that happened, we received so many cards from all over the world, from our Toastmasters community, that one day our letter carrier rang our bell. And when I answered the door, she handed me another stack. And then she asked me, one, what had happened? And two, who were all of these people from all over the world sending us cards? And so I told her. And she said, I have never seen anything like this in my life. And I just looked at her and I said, that's what true communities do. You know, ladies and gentlemen, in this world, there will always be someone who looks at you and says, for whatever reason, you don't belong here. You don't act right. You don't look right. You don't sound right. But remember earlier when I mentioned the International Convention, one of the things that I love so much about our international conventions, no matter where they are, is the fact that I can walk into that ballroom and I can look and I see thousands of people sitting side by side who are different. Our skin is different. Our dress is different. Our language, our culture, our religion, our politics, our education, our bank accounts are all different. And for every country represented in that room, there would be someone back home to look at you and say, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be sitting next to that person. But do you know what I see? I see a community of people who have learned that if we can learn to communicate, we can conquer our differences. And that is something to celebrate. I see a community of people who understand that if we learn to lead, we can tear down walls and bring peace to the world. And that is something to celebrate. And I see a community of people who are there to lift each other up to their full potential and to share equally 
in your triumphs and your trials. And that is something to celebrate. And ladies and gentlemen, that is true now, maybe more than ever. Because some of you may have been so affected by this pandemic. Some of you may have lost your jobs. But I want you to remember this. As you go out and seek another job, what is it that will set you apart from others who are equally qualified? What will set you apart? Your ability to communicate. Some of you right now have people looking to you for guidance and direction. And what is it that allows you to do that? Your ability to lead. That is something to celebrate. And some of you need now more than ever a sense of togetherness people around you to support you, even virtually, and where do you find that? In a community. Where do you find all of that? And where do you still find love, hope, learning, creativity, and goals? Ladies and gentlemen, you still find all of that in Toastmasters. So you who are leaders, please go back to your members and remind them of those things. Remind them of all of the things that Toastmasters can bring to you. Remind them of all of the things, all of the places Toastmasters can take you and remind them that no matter what everyone else around us is saying right now, we still have reason to celebrate. Wow, that was absolutely enlightening detail, Jana Banhill. I'm just Speechless on behalf of all the 150 plus attendees, I would like to give that standing ovation. I'm oh. sure I'll, <laughs> all would agree to that. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. With that, let us move on with our question and answer session. I'm sure thank all you. the participants will be having a lot of uh, questions and want to have interactions. Let me not stand in between you all. For that, leadership is seeing the possibilities while others are seeing limitations. Said, yeah, you all guessed it again. It is again John C. Maxwell. To handle this problem solving questions, I mean, this QA, we have one of the finest leaders from Qatar who has held various positions, including that of being our own leadership chair last year for our district. He believes life is a continuous exercise in creative problem solving. No wonder he is a specialist in providing learning solution to industry. Help me virtually welcome the very handsome, the man with the baritone voice, our moderator for today, distinguished Toastmaster DTM Ram Mohan Rai. Thank you, DTM Bangai, for that lovely introduction. DTM Jana Farnhill, our esteemed guest this evening. Other leaders, Toastmasters from District 116 and from around the world, thank you for your presence here this evening. Thank you, DTM Jana, for that very stimulating and inspiring journey 
to the Toastmasters that you have gone through and you articulated here. I'm sure all of us, the new Toastmasters and the old, are taking a lot of notes from this journey of yours for their own benefit. Questions have been pouring in, and, uh, and I'm not sure if uh, I could squeeze all of these questions in the, in the 20 minutes that has been allotted to me. Oh my. <laughs> so, so let's, uh, without much ado, let's get on with the question. And the question number one was from our very own Toastmaster from District 116, DTM Jayakumar Menon. He says that uh, you mentioned, you said that everything is lockdown, etc. But don't you think, ma'am, he says, that we are over optimistic to the point of not seeing reality as it should be seen? Do you believe? in prepare for the worst while hoping for the best? How should Toastmasters prepare for the worst? That's the question. DTM Jana. Thank you so very much for that question. Uh, and actually you bring up something that I, I appreciate uh, because I, when I do speak more on uh, just just a complete leadership seminar one of one of the points that I make uh, that is absolutely necessary for being an effective leader is you have to be positive but you have to be realistic I have known many well I have known leaders in my life in Toastmasters who all you heard from them was positive. And we're doing great. Oh, we're doing wonderful. This is going to be the best year and so forth and so on. And then you look at the statistics, right? You go to the dashboard, you look, and lo and behold, they're in the very bottom. So it is absolutely critical that you temper your optimism and, and your positivity with reality. Now, I believe that in order to do that, a leader has to be responsible. And you know, part of being an effective leader is having vision, seeing into the future. So I believe one of the things right now that, that Toastmasters International and our, our international president, Deepak Menon, our executive director, CEO, uh, Daniel Rex, has done a wonderful job of is realizing the gravity of the situation, but continuing to do everything they can do to keep us as a community engaged and pursuing our goals. And what we're seeing right now is a perfect example, these online meetings. And I will be the first to tell you when online meetings were first brought up in Toastmasters, which was long before this pandemic happened, I will tell you, I was not a proponent of those. Now, now that our clubs have had that as our only alternative to meet, I absolutely see that not only have they kept us connected and they've allowed us to keep on track with our educational goals, but think about all of the new skills we are learning. So I, I appreciate your question. I absolutely do believe you must be realistic. And I think Toastmasters has given us a great example of just how to do that with all of the online things we are doing to get us right 
where we are so that when we can meet face to face again, we will not only have not skipped a beat, but we will even be ahead because now we possess skills that we didn't before. I hope that answers your question. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for that detailed uh, reply. And there's another one, uh, not so far from the same thing, from the question, from the point he made. It was, it is from, uh, from the area five director in Kandator from district 82. He says, part three has introduced us to a whole new dimension of learning. COVID-19 lockdown, though initially forced us to go online, later opened doors to unbelievable possibilities and opportunities. We Toastmasters have adapted to this new normal so swiftly and continue to gain immensely. Still, there are one bunch of Toastmasters who are hesitant to embrace this change. You are messaged to them yeah, so, so I, am, I am the living example. I, I just mentioned when, when all of the online meetings started to uh, surface and, and be talked about before we were participating in them, I didn't think it was a good idea because I thought we needed to meet face to face and that was the only way we would be able to accomplish our goals. And so I see now where I was wrong in that, uh, in that opinion. And I am so thankful that I have seen the light uh, and realized that not only has this kept us on track, but taught us new skills. So as a leader, and this is a, the leadership uh, series, leadership lectures, as a leader, one of our responsibilities is to share a vision with our followers. Another, another point I make in, in my leadership seminar is leaders must lead by example. You cannot ask anyone on your team to do anything you are not willing to do first. So what I would encourage all of you to do, and let's face it, it, it doesn't have to be online learning, right? It could be pathways. It could be serving as a club officer or a district officer, anything. There will always be someone who is resistant. So I encourage you to lead those individuals by example go to them, even virtually or on the phone, and share with them how this has changed you and what you have gained from it and help them the best you can see that they too can learn. Just give it a try. And I think once you can get them hooked, they'll be there. Thank you, Jana. The next question is from a Toastmaster from District 116, Alcor Toastmasters. He says that I have seen many of your videos and I have wondered how were you able to turn the crime scene into a humorous scene? If many fail to deliver a humorous speech, how could one enhance his humorous skills, humorous speech skills? How do you enhance your your humorous skills? Is that the question? He says, he says that you have, in one of the videos he has seen of yours, is that you were able to turn a crime scene into a humorous scene. And how does one enhance the humorous speech skills, is his question. Yeah, okay. So... You know, one, it, one of the things I tell people is I, I, don't, I don't think I'm funny. <laughs> and, and I said that one time, I was on a panel and someone asked me about humor and I said, I don't think I'm funny. And the moderator said, now that's funny. <laughs> but, you know, I am a firm believer and, and what I have learned is that 
whether you are speaking about something very, very serious, which I guess I was because I was crying, or something that is funny, the way that we are most effective with our emotions is when we are speaking from the heart and telling our own story. And it's my opinion that I have seen many speakers and, and perhaps some of you who've been around for a while and seen a lot of speech contests and other speeches, uh, maybe Balraj uh, understands what I'm saying here, maybe Sunny and others of you. Uh, I have seen speakers who they aren't as effective as they could be because they're trying to be someone else. Yeah. They've heard another speaker, and instead of just looking at the strengths of that speaker, oh, they have amazing facial gestures. Oh, they are able to really organize their speech well. It, instead of picking out the tips of what they technically do well, they try to become that speaker. And, and maybe tell stories that, that aren't their personal stories. And, and I think that's where you lose your connectivity. The very best way that you will always be able to connect with your audience, whether you are laughing or crying, is telling your own personal stories. And, and that does two things. Number one, When you are willing to put yourself out there, then you gain credibility with your audience. Nice. You know, when they know that you have fallen on your face, they think, oh, I can relate to that because I have fallen on my face. And when you can laugh at yourself for something you've done, they go, oh, well, that's even funnier because I've done something similar. So my, my recommendation to you would be, whether you're trying to be serious or funny, speak from your heart and tell your own stories. Thank you, Dana. Thank you very much for that insight. And I don't know how much time we've left, but uh, I think we can take a question, one question. And this is by... Anjali Pimple, who is from the District 116. Her question is, could you please, uh, could you, uh, how do you look at the existing pathway program as compared to the traditional competent communicator program? What is your opinion on this? Well, you know, just like everything, uh, we evolve, right? And certainly Pathways looks nothing like our traditional program. But I also remember <laughs> before we had the traditional program, and we still call that, but it looked entirely different. You know, that first manual had 15 speeches, not 10. And there weren't near as many advanced manuals. So just like everything, we evolve, you know, one thing that, that I learned, my husband's grandfather kept a sign on his desk for as long as, as he went to his office. And he went to his office until he was well into his 80s. And when he had to close his office, my husband moved this sign to his desk. And the sign reads, when you're through learning, you're through. And one of the ways that we continue to learn as an individual and as an organization is to develop new things, to try new things. And certainly Pathways is new. And I will confess right now that it is another thing that I was a bit hesitant uh, to jump into. Now, I, I kind of took a, a bit of a hiatus from, from participating uh, with my club because of my, my husband was ill, and so we could no longer attend. 
And so once I, I did get back and was, was starting to look at, at pathways, I was going, oh my goodness, this is really different. But just like it, just like the online, once I jumped in, I went, okay, Toastmasters is not finished with me yet. I still have something to learn. And I hope all of you will uh, continue to think that way. We still have more to learn and new things to try. And I think if we go in with the right mind, we will continue to learn and that means we will continue to grow and that means we will continue to add value to those around us okay thank you so much jana there's one more question we can take i don't know how much time we've got please somebody let me know and uh, <laughs> this question is from a past division governor uh, division director of district 116 he asks you can celebrate yourself. You can celebrate yourself if you are fluid, not rigid. If, if you are fluid and not rigid. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, and where do we learn to be fluent? If I'm understanding the question correctly, where is the best place we can possibly learn to be fluent and not rigid, either in our speaking or in our thinking. And I believe it's in Toastmasters. So if you want to learn to be fluent and not rigid, please, please, please stay in Toastmasters. If I understood your question correctly, uh, that's my answer. And let me make sure that I get in, just in case we don't have uh, time for any more questions. Yes, that is. I cannot pass this opportunity by without thanking every one of you on this call right now who is serving as a leader. Whether you are a club leader or a district leader, an international leader, we have region advisors on the phone, past international president on the phone, I hope you realize that this organization would not exist without you. We cannot do what we do without our leaders in the club guiding our members. Our clubs cannot exist without the leaders of the district guiding them through. So from the bottom of my heart, Thank you so much for your service. And never forget how important you are to the success of this organization. Thank you so much for being a leader. Thank you, Jana, for taking all those questions. It was so, so good of you. And I'm sure everybody got a good uh, insight into, into your leadership, into your thoughts. And I would like to just mention, as you just said, told about, uh, you, you told, uh, you wanted to uh, give, you gave this good message to all the leaders. I just missed to mentioning one leader who, who asked me this question about, uh, about some people not getting uh, used to meetings online. He was, he was uh, Toastmaster Rakesh Menon from India. So I just wanted to mention that. And with this, this session uh, winds up and I would like to hand over the control to the MC DTM Mangai. Over to you Mangai. Thanks. Thanks a lot DTM. Uh, yeah. As well as DTM Jana for that wonderful session. I'm sure we all enjoyed it. Let me extend our heartfelt gratitude once again for all your time and uh, the way you have enlightened and enlightened us. Thanks a lot. And please stay with us. We just have a short felicitation uh, from our leaders. I request our leaders to kindly excuse me from the uh, introduction part of it as we are shunning, running short of time. May I request our past international president DTM Balraj Arnashalam to address few words. Host 
Could you please unmute DTM Balraj Arna Salam? Their name speaks in volume. So we would like to hear from them, them giving just introduction. DTM Balraj Arna Salam. Screen is on yours, sir. He's unmuted. I don't think he's there or not. Okay. Let me invite our Region 11 advisor, DTM Ali Shabazz Ali, to address few words. May I request DTM Ali Shabazz Ali? He's there. Hi. Hi, Mangai. That's Good a great evening. job you are doing this evening. Yes. Um, to our past international presidents, especially our keynote speaker, Lana, for the day, and district trio and leaders on the call. This has been an amazing experience, and I salute what District 116 is doing, bringing our leaders more closer to us with such amazing messages. What Lana has spoken, it's not just her, her life experience or personal stories. It's, it's an ocean of learnings which me as region advisor, I would take and apply it in my leadership skills and further in my Toastmaster skills. What I simply learn from all what Lana said, don't give up, keep learning, no matter how challenging the situation is. Yep. And I recommend everybody who is listening on the call to such great leaders, past international president. And just looking at Lana today, surely I, I, I get that humble aura around her, that those vibes that she spoke so openly. I, I, I seriously felt that I have, I have known her for years just listening to her and her personality, I could feel it. So my message to everybody is, all these learnings, we need to apply it somewhere. We need to go and do something about it. So it's not like when the call ends, we give up all our hopes. District 116 right. is very positive, and I recommend go full steam ahead. Thank you very much. Over mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, DTM Ali Shabazali, for those uh, energizing words. May I request whether DTM Balraj Arnasalam is back? Is he there? DTM Balraj Arnasalam? Let me move on with our next regional advisor, DTM Sunil Kotaratil, I hope. Is he there? DTM Sunil Kotaratil? Hi. Hi, Mangal. Uh, good evening. Wonderful to see this learning experience. Past international president, our keynote speaker, Jana, and the leaders of District 116, the trio, and the past leaders coming in full swing with such a wonderful event. Thank you all. What I can see here is the, the enthusiasm, the togetherness towards a greater goal to inspire our members. And this could not have been even imagined a couple of months ago. We are stuck with a pandemic, adversity, but and meanwhile, how we are emerging how we are utilizing, how we are changing it into opportunity. That's amazing. And for that, my full appreciation to the district, the wonderful team of District 116, fully supported with the past leaders, DTM Sony, DTM Ramohan Rai, DTM Rajeshwar, and everyone. This is great to see. And this is the spirit we carry forward in Toastmasters. This is the inspiration we give to our younger generation, the members, the aspiring leaders. And this is how we ensure our districts, our clubs, our members benefit 
and reached a sustainable level. District 116 can be so proud, not only in arranging this type of wonderful education sessions, but the main objective, supporting the members, seeing the members' requirement, and reaching out to do whatever we can within our possibility, irrespective of the limitations we are put in, to serve the members for their benefit. Like all the members of District 116 and the audience here, I also benefited a lot from Jana's speech. It's always great to hear how the leaders of Toastmaster International, past international presidents, and the leaders who are served at that level share their experience and inspire us, keep on inspiring us with those wonderful words. Thank you so much, Jana, again. Thank you, District 116 leaders. Let us continue. Let's continue this journey, a journey of inspiration, journey of learning, journey of empowering ourselves. Thank you so much. Thank you, DTM Sunil, for those encouraging words. I <laughs> say. Oh. <laughs> uh, DTM, our region advisor, DTM James, if in room, to address a few words, DTM James. Oh. Now we'll be having one photo session at the end. Uh, after the word of thanks, I, I would request all the members to kindly stay in and have a photo session with our speaker. James, James is not here. James is not here. Okay, then we'll continue with the session. DTM Balraj is also uh, not returned to the room, I, I believe. Can you check or? We'll proceed. Yeah, he's not responding. Okay. Okay, then we'll proceed with the vote of thanks. Tough situations don't last, but tough people. Who said this? Not James, uh, John Maxwell again. Keep guessing and Google. Let me call upon this tough, tiring, towering personality of District 116 who believes in now or never, L later becomes never. The man known for his pleasing smile and motivations, distinguished Toastmaster, Manzur Moedin, CGD of District 116. Over to you, District, distinguished Toastmaster, Manzur Moedin. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster, Mangai for that kind introduction. Past International President, Distinguished Toastmaster Jana Banhil, our keynote speaker for the day. For a moment, I thought I was attending an international conference having two past international presidents, three regional advisors, past yes. international director, past international regional advisor, district leaders, division, Toastmasters from around the world. A very good evening to all of you. Distinguished Toastmaster Jana Banhil. You know, the every single attendee today, it was so, uh, we had about 160 plus attendees this evening who were celebrating your talk on celebrations. Who were listening to every single word that you said, wherein you inspired everyone, instilling hope and only hope during this pandemic situation. Distinguished Toastmaster, Jana Banhil, on behalf of District 116, I'd like to express our sincere thanks and gratitude for being with us today, this evening, speaking to everyone from your heart to our heart, inspiring us, motivating us, instilling that hope in each one of us. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, now, I know it's very difficult uh, for you to give a thunderous round of applause and standing ovation at this moment since we are having an online meeting, but when you said, you know, I imagine that everyone is raising their hands. So please imagine that everyone is giving a standing ovation and an applause to you, DTM Jana Banhil. I'd like to also express our sincere thanks to our past international president, distinguished Toastmaster Arunachalam Balraj, who was with us for some time listening to your speech. We're also blessed with the presence of three regional advisors, distinguished Toastmaster Ali Shah Basal. Distinguished Toastmaster Sunil Kotaratil and Distinguished Toastmaster James. 
We also had two more very special personalities amongst us today. The past international director, distinguished Toastmaster George Thomas, and the past regional advisor, distinguished Toastmaster Sunny Vergis. We're also blessed to have people who took up the role of introducing our keynote speaker that included that that was by our immediate past district director, distinguished Toastmaster Rajeshwar Sundareshan. I'd like to express my sincere thanks and appreciation to the role players, the master of ceremony, the DTM Mangai, our host, Toastmaster Venkat, who has been doing an extremely good job for the last two months since COVID. I think he is the busiest person in District 116, hosting almost all the online meetings. Thank you, Toastmaster Venkat, and a special thanks to Division B for hosting and supporting this event by our District 116. And I also thank, on behalf of District 116, to everyone, 160 plus people, and to you, Distinguished Toastmaster Jana. I had a quick look and found that close to 50% of the attendees today were women. Probably it was your profile who attracted so much of them to attend and listen to you keenly throughout your speech. And I'd like to express our gratitude and thanks to everyone from around the world who attended, including from our District 116. I saw people from Saudi, UAE, Oman, Egypt, India, and you know that's all I could uh, uh, pick up from. So once again, thank you so much. So please remain for the photograph with our keynote speaker. With that, with the permission of our district director, on behalf of uh, Raghavan Menon, I declare that the leadership series talk number two is officially, I repeat, officially. <laughs> thank you. Bless you all. Uh, please be there, uh, DTM uh, Jana, for a few more minutes. Okay. Uh, we'll have a quick uh, photo session. Okay. May I request all of you to switch on your camera, please? Smile, please. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, I see that, Sunny. Gonna make me cry right before we take pictures. <laughs> Thank you so much. Photo is taken. Oh, I didn't know the photo was taken. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear a one, two, three. <laughs> one more, ready? One, two, three, smile. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now I will spotlight our Sunny. So you want you are showing some picture. Just a second. One second. One second. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second. Yeah. Are you muted, Sunny? Yeah. This uh -huh. is taken in this is taken in 2007, uh, Jana, and uh, I think I have I think I have put on more height lately. <laughs> 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 and this is the one you know we have taken with my with our wife. You know, you are yeah. so fair. You are so fair that I can see only your uh, silhouette. You know, silhouette. <laughs> but Jana, one thing I can tell you: you have undoubtedly you have become more beautiful and gracious in the last 13 years. <laughs> You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Thank you so much for the invitation to join you all uh, this evening. I am so proud of the leadership that this district 
uh, shows and I know that you will continue. Uh, and I know that we will continue to celebrate District 116. Uh, if there were questions that you didn't get to, uh, you have my permission. If, if you wanna forward those to me in an email, I'll be happy to, to answer them. But thank you again for the chance to share with you. It's great to see you all. I wish you all the best and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Thank you very much. <laughs>